Welcome back to Meticulous Mechanic. I'm going to be finally refilling my radiator after adjusting the valves. We already drained everything in one of the previous videos. If you want to watch that, the hot radiator is under pressure. Therefore, do not remove the radiator cap when the engine is hot. Scalding hot fluid and steam may be blown out, which would cause serious injury. When the engine is cooled, open the radiator cap. So if we move over here to filling the cooling system, I've purchased some high quality ethylene glycol antifreeze and the capacity, which I think is kind of strange, 1.93 liters or 2.04 US quarts. That's for all the passages and everything. And then 0.25 liters or 0.26 US quarts for the coolant reservoir overflow. This is always good to know beforehand if one of these things should happen. If it splashes in your eyes, Rinse with water thoroughly. If you get it on your clothes, quickly wash it away with water and soap and water. And if it's swallowed, do induce vomiting. So to simplify this whole process, you basically fill up the cooling system to the specified amount. Reinstall the radiator cap. I'm going to leave the stopper and the bolt off for now because I'm going to have to take it back up and probably add a little bit. And you fill the coolant reservoir to the maximum level A. Start the engine, warm it up for several minutes, and then turn it off and check the coolant level. So to check the coolant level, stand the vehicle on a level surface. The coolant level should be between the maximum level mark A and a minimum level mark B. If it's below the minimum level mark, add the recommended coolant to the proper level. So there's the B and the A, that's marked on the cover. Then start the engine, warm it up for several minutes, and turn it off and then recheck the coolant level. So we'll go over here and remove the radiator cap. I'm going to go ahead and use nitrile gloves so I don't get it on my hands. If you come down here to the coolant reservoir, you can see the minimum level B low and the maximum level A full. So we're going to fill it up to the full line. I just removed the two bolts that hold this cover. You can refer to that video on how to get this off. actually just slide this out really easy. I think the hardest part of this process is this little plastic spacer that always falls out. I had put that little piece of blue tape on it yesterday just to keep it from falling out, but I'm going to have to do that again when I put it back together. So basically just leave it hanging like I said in yesterday's video, reinstalling the radiator, and then you can pull this rubber cap off. All these hoses just dangle. So I'm just going to fill this up to the max line. Okay, that's good. Now I just got to slide it up like this so it's sitting in there like that. So then retuck the wire, not the wire, the hose in there. So I had to go refer to my old video radiator cap and overflow bottle removal at 13 minutes and 52 seconds figure out how this one part went together because I had it backwards. So this little spacer has to go in the bottle over here first. And then this goes in here like that. And then, and then while this is hanging and you're not trying to spill everything, you've got to get this black cover back on like this. And so what makes it hard is when you the black cover just pushes this thing and it falls out on you. So you're going to have to bump that up against the frame, make sure it's held, slide the black cover on, and then get the bolt in. As a black cover, the plastic, it, does, it slides on roughly, so it doesn't just slide on, it pushes. So let's give it a, another attempt. So instead of using that blue electrical tape like in yesterday's video, reinstalling the radiator, I just use 
one wrap of the scotch tape and that keeps that plastic bushing from falling out on you. That's this little plastic bushing there. I've got the bottle inside the black shroud now. I would definitely practice this a few times before you have the liquid in there because it's quite a finagling job. You got to get this little hose in there and wrap it around the bolt and the spacers. So I bought two bottles of coolant and I had taken the 0.26 out of this bottle for that reservoir. This other bottle's full, it's 64 ounces. So 32 ounces in a quart, that's two quarts. And it says, that's why I thought the number was funny, 2.04 quarts. So we can pretty much put this whole bottle in. So good thing I remembered to put that new Copper drain plug washer in. I can't believe this thing's still leaking after all this, but not too much, just a few drips. So I'm going to replace this washer. So there's the new washer and the bolt. So we're going to torque this to 10 newton meters. 10 newton meters. So I'm just going to use this funnel and spin it up like this. So I'm just going to put the 2.04. So actually this whole bottle plus a hair more, but we're going to have to start the engine and check it. I have a feeling it's not going to take all of it because there's empty radiator hoses and that water pump's going to have to kick in. So I'm going to keep an eye on this when I get to the end. So I'm just starting to see it. And there's just a little left in the bottle. So it pretty much took the whole bottle except maybe half a cup. I'm going to go ahead and put the cap on now. I'll just suck this little bit out before I put the cap on. There's a whole video on how to get this cap on and off easily. So now that I have the radiator filled up and I'm in the middle of adjusting my valve job playlist, I'm going to have to hook up the fuel line to the fuel tank and the electrical connector to the fuel tank. And then under here, I'm going to have to reattach the ECU. That way, once I fire it up, I can sync the throttle body. So I bought this carb tune. Has a bunch of fittings. I'm going to do a whole video on this. So to wrap this up, we'll just check the level after we get everything running.